Hello and welcome to HPLC Winter Webinars Part 2, Sample Preparation for HPLC. My name is John Bardsley and I'm an application chemist for Thermo Fisher Scientific. So what are we going to talk about today? I'll first of all clarify what is meant by sample preparation and then take a look at some of the reasons why it's important to think about performing sample preparation prior to HPLC. Then I'll take a look at some of the options available to us on the market and we'll end with a closer look at some of the products on offer and how to get the best out of them. More information and technical advice can be found via the link which, can, which will appear throughout the presentation and will take you to our technical support pages www.thermofisher.com forward slash chromexpert So what do we mean by sample preparation? In short, any manipulation of our sample prior to further analysis. What needs to happen to your sample to make it ready for injection onto your HPLC system? There are many different options available to us on the market, each with their own uses and benefits. This ranges from sample manipulation techniques such as dilution, filtration or centrifugation through to sample extraction techniques such as solvent extraction or solid phase extraction. Some of these techniques can be quite manual, others can be automated to improve speed and ultimately sample throughput. Which technique to choose depends heavily on some key factors such as what is the sample matrix, what is the goal of the analysis, and what is the next step of the analysis. A few reasons to use sample preparation are listed here. Some of these reasons, such as compatibility to further analysis, are mandatory. For example, you can't inject an apple onto a HPLC column without some form of sample preparation. Some of these reasons, such as simplify complex matrices, are essential. You can inject a whole blood sample onto a column, but you won't get good lifetime out of that column. Others are beneficial such as speed of analysis and concentrate the sample. These drastically improve either the assay performance or the laboratory workflow. In an ideal situation, all of these factors would be addressed. So let's take a look at some of the techniques. On the simpler end of the scale, we have sample filtration, used predominantly for the removal of particulates from a sample generally used when any manipulation of the sample is not wanted but system robustness is improved. Filters come in a wide range of material. This is because material used for the membrane is not compatible with all solvent or sample types. Cellulose based membranes for example have a low protein binding characteristic but PTFE is a higher solvent and pressure resistance range. Membrane compatibility charts can be found in the Chrome Expert link. Compatibility to further analysis is a key reason to perform sample preparation. Heavily used for this reason in food and beverage application areas, as well as environmental analysis. Solid or semi-solid samples must first be converted into liquid sample for injection onto a HPLC system. Examples include foodstuffs such as fruits or meats and solid environmental samples such as soil. Some liquid samples may also need to be converted for compatibility to HPLC, such as samples containing an immiscible liquid or damaging reagents. This is sometimes referred to as solvent exchange. Solid samples typically undergo a solvent extraction. Homogenizing the samples followed by extraction with a solvent is quite a manual but inexpensive process. The resultant extract is often not very pure and extraction recoveries can be quite variable. Further cleanup of the solvent extract is highly recommended to remove unwanted interferences. SPE, liquid-liquid extraction or catches 
are recommended and well understood extraction techniques that can help here. We'll discuss these further on in the presentation. Simplifying complex samples or removal of the analyte from the interferences is probably the way most people view sample preparation. Here we look at common properties for all of our analytes of interest and we exploit these properties to selectively extract them from the matrix. This may be an ionic species or a level of hydrophobicity or simply a certain molecular weight. Reducing interferences from the matrix is the inverse approach. Rather than targeting the analyte, this approach targets and removes specific interferences present in the matrix, leaving the analytes behind for further analysis. Common ways of doing this include pass-through SPE, where a sample is passed through an SPE plate designed to capture interferences and allow the, sample, uh, the analytes in the sample of interest to move through unretained. What more often used is dispersive SPE, where loose SPE material is added to a, to a solvent extract. It captures the interferences from the matrix before being centrifuged out. So to that end, let's look at catches. Catches is a multi-step manual process of extracting analytes from solid food samples. It's quick, easy, cheap, effective, rugged, and safe. For a catches method, samples are typically homogenized before being solvent extracted. The solvent extract is taken away for further cleanup by dispersive SPE. Sample extracts will remain diluted, so further processing such as evaporation may be required if the analyte is not present in sufficient quantities. Advice on extraction solvents, buffers and dispersive SPEs can be for different matrices can be found by clicking on the Chrome Expert link. Protein precipitation is a popular method for the analysis of biological samples, especially in small molecule analysis. Protein precipitation removes most of the proteins present in a biological sample, and so is a simple and cheap method of sample preparation. The process is manual and slow, but can be sped up by the use of thermoscientific HyperCEP 96-well protein precipitation plate. The plate allows you to perform a protein precipitation in the well itself before filtering out the solid precipitate. The procedure can also be automated due to its 96-well plate format. Liquid-liquid extraction is another popular method for the analysis of small molecules. The technique involves mixing the normally aqueous sample with an immiscible non-polar solvent, such as hexane or MTBA. After a period of mixing, the two immiscible solvents settle into two phases, a non-polar phase and a polar phase. More polar compounds will reside in the polar solvent more non-polar compounds will reside in the non-polar solvent. Moderately polar compounds may reside across both phases in a certain ratio, depending on their hydrophobicity. So multiple extractions are often required to achieve high recovery levels. The process can be manual and slow and can be prone to human error. However, it is a much cleaner extraction technique than protein precipitation in terms of reduction of number of common interferences from biological samples. The extraction process can be sped up by using supported liquid extraction, or SLE. SLE is a cartridge or plate-based extraction which contains a packed bed of highly polar material, diatomaceous earth. The aqueous sample is supported on the packed bed. The material is then washed with your non-polar solvent to elute the non-polar compounds. This is a simple and much faster method of performing a liquid-liquid extraction. Solid phase extraction, or SPE, is one of the most selective techniques used in sample preparation. Cartridges or plates are packed with chromatographic material 
traditionally supported in place with two inert frets. The extremely wide range of chemistries available makes this technique very versatile and highly selective methods can be achieved. As in chromatography, the separation is achieved through the affinity of the sample components to the stationary phase and the mobile phase. Although a wide range of silica-based SPE is available, we are seeing a growing preference to the use of more robust polymeric material. Isolation of specific compounds from very complex samples, such as biological samples like plasma, can be challenging. Changes in population, diet, additional medication can all have an effect on the composition of a sample being analysed. And so particularly for quantitative analysis, the more selective a method can be, the less risk to analytical failures in the future. Moreover, the cleaner a sample is, the less risk to the rest of the analytical system. Here we show a comparison between a number of extracted plasma samples. The blue data points represent a protein-precipitated protein plasma sample. The red data points represent plasma sample extracted by SPE. As we can see, the reproducibility extract or extract is clear to see. But why is the data so different? One possible reason is that the SPE is removing more of the sample matrix, and so the method is not suffering from matrix effects. Matrix effects can take multiple forms, such as system buildup leading to blockages, or changes in chromatographic selectivity, or well-documented iron suppression in mass spectrometry. Iron suppression occurs when matrix components co-elute with the compound of interest and compete for charge within the iron source of the mass spectrometer. The chromatogram here shows an infusion of a compound directly into a mass spectrometer at a consistent rate. At the same time, a blank extracted plasma was injected onto the chromatography system and run into the mass spec. A flat trace here would indicate a consistent signal and that no suppression is occurring. However, the signal is not consistent. The fluctuation seen is caused by the presence of the blank sample eluting from the column and entering the iron source. As you can see, the level of suppression varies throughout the run, and so the HBLC method needs to be carefully considered to manage these. Ideally, the matrix components that cause this suppression should be eliminated prior to injection. One known cause of iron suppression are phospholipids, a major component of biological samples. Here we have a measured a number of different phospholipids in a sample followed by extraction by protein precipitation, reverse phase SPE, and iron exchange SPE. As expected, the protein precipitated extract shows the highest levels of phospholipid, so matrix effects can be expected. Reverse phase SPE shows a great reduction in the level of phospholipids, helping to reduce the matrix effect. Iron exchange SPE showed an almost complete elimination of phospholipids, meaning potentially faster and more robust methods. Of course, SPE has its pain points also. One of the major sources of variability in SPE is the packing of the SPE columns themselves. Poor packing can leave the cartridges with voids, channels, or poor particle distribution, meaning inconsistencies in recoveries can be seen. Thermoscientific solar SPE has an altogether different packing method. Rather than loose powder being supported between two frits, inert support material is pre-mixed with our active polymeric material and prepared together by a proprietary method forms a very consistent ratio and a single solid bed of material. Solar SPE does not suffer from voiding, channeling or packing inconsistencies and the sorbent bed cannot move at all. Here we compare samples being extracted by solar SPE 
compared to a traditional loose packed SPE material. The percentage recovery of caffeine is plotted in each case. Solar shows much better reproducibility extraction to extraction. Another benefit of SPE is its flexibility. Methods can quite often be developed very quickly, but quite often there are further ways to optimize your methods based on your particular needs. Typical SPE method involves solvent conditioning, sample loading, washing of interferences, and finally eluting your analyte. The choice of solvent and reagents used in each step should be appropriate for your analysis. Unlike analytical chromatography, methods often use an on-off mechanism, where compounds are locked in place and cleaned before a change in mobile phase is used to release or unlock those components and elute them back off the SPE cartridge. Here we can see some typical SPE methods run on our solar range of SPE. Let's focus on our solar HRP, or reverse phase polymeric SPE. The main functionality of our HP, HRP phase is hydrophobic, so methods tend to look similar to that of a C18 analytical column, where samples are first loaded with a highly aqueous sol solvent and then eluted with, a, with an organic solvent. Looking at this method for the wash and elution stage, we've used a solvent of methanol for both of these, but we are unsure what percent of methanol should be used in each case. We can find this out quite easily by using an elution profile experiment. By loading your compound onto the cartridge and then washing with 10% methanol, 20% methanol and increments all the way up to 100% methanol, collecting each fraction and analyzing it, we can work out a method very quickly. Here we can plot the results. If we plot percent methanol against the amount of compound recovered, we can start to build an elution profile. You can see in this example that no compound rec was, rec was recovered until 70% methanol wash was used. And by the 90% methanol wash, all the compound had been recovered back from the SBE cartridge. This is our elution profile. Most manufacturers of SBE will provide generic SBE methods with their product. But as they don't know what your compound is, it's very difficult to accurately predict the best method to use. Quite often, 5 or 10% methanol is advised to use as the wash, and then 100% methanol is advised to use as the elution. This is a very wide range, and so could also capture quite a lot of unwanted material. By using our elution profile data, we can determine the best wash and elution conditions for our analyte, making the method as selective as possible. Generic methods are also given for other SPE chemistries. Here we see mixed mode ion exchange methods. Provided the correct phase has been selected, most will find the generic methods suitable for their analysis, as they are clean and very selective already. However, you can still optimize if issues occur, or you wish to speed up analysis. Some things to look at are changing the counter ions that are used in the method, changing the solvent or composition of the solvent. Methods can also further be optimized for speed. Equilibration steps are not always required, and a reduction in elution solvent can have a major benefit in terms of analyte concentration. Typically, to achieve a higher concentration of an SBE extract, the sample is evaporated and then reconstituted with a lower volume of mobile phase. This is time consuming and can cause problems with loss of analytes due to non-specific binding or loss of volatile analytes. So instead we can apply a larger volume of sample onto an SPE device and use a much smaller volume to elute the compounds back off. This way a concentration can be achieved without the need to dry down the extract. As well as a wide array of chemistries, our sole range is available in standard 10 mg or a micro-elution format, 
where elution volumes as low as 25 microliters can be used. Here we see a sample of nitrolumic acid before and after it has been through a solar microelution plate. A concentration factor of times 20 was achieved here. Alternatively, an SBE method using a large volume of sample can be optimized to give the same results but with a much less sample use, ideal for a limited sample, a sample limited situation. Line A is an established method which uses 250 microliters of sample and is extracted into 250 microliters of solvent. You can reduce the sample volume but will still need to dry down the sample and reconstitute in order to maintain the level of sensitivity, which is demonstrated in line B. In line C, we can still reduce the sample volume, but by using solar micro, we can still obtain the same analyte concentration without the need for dry down, simply by using a much smaller elution volume back from the SBE plate. So, how do I choose the best option for me? You need to determine what you can and can't do without. So what's the most important thing for you? <coughs> Cost, assay robustness, compatibility, all of these things do matter. Ultimately, it's a balance of the most accurate robust methods against cost and speed of analysis. Thank you, and I would encourage you to take a look at the link www.thermoscientific.com slash chromexpert. The page <coughs> is a great resource for technical information, product selection, and technical support contacts who are always happy to help. Finally, any questions or additional comments, please email the email address on the screen now. Thank you very much.